Welcome to Guest Baptist Church this morning. It's good to have each of you with us. Got a few announcements to make mention of. Um, please remember our social distancing guidelines as you leave this morning. Um, offering plates are in the back. Uh, we do have online giving if you'd like to take advantage of that. Uh, our Easter Carnival is today uh, from 4 to 7. Uh, if you have volunteered to help work, please be here at 2.30. We will meet in the Fellowship Hall uh, to get things started setting up and find out our assignments for the day and things like that. So 2.30 in the Fellowship Hall if you have volunteered or if you have not signed up but you still feel like you can help, uh, be here at 2.30 today to help get things going. Um, next Saturday is the DeKalb Baptist Association Golf Tournament. Uh, if you would be interested in playing with that, you can see me after church and I will try to get you some information about that. And... Um, we will get you going for that. Are there any other announcements this morning? All right. Thank you so much. the Guest Baptist Church this morning. It's good to have each of you with us. If you're visiting with us, we're glad that you're here. Uh, would there be prayer requests before we go further in the service? All right, remember T.W. Also remember uh, Brother David Monroe is not doing well. I got a report this week, so remember him. Any others? All right. All right. Any others? Come on, brother. You got to have Jesus on here. I tell you, you got to change it. <laughs> you say, put him in the right time, you're going to lose a few pounds. 
Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Bless your heart. Amen. We've been praying. I'm telling you, on Wednesday night, <laughs> Brother George, nearly every Wednesday night, he says, you pray for my lost family. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 One down, many to go. Amen. Amen. So keep praying. Anybody else this morning? Amen. Amen. Bless you. Is there any unspoken in the house? God knows those needs. I can promise you he can supply them, and he, and he will if we come in faith believing. Amen. Uh, Y'all stand and smile at somebody. Wave at them. Tell them you're glad they're here. Jeremy Gwynn, if he would, open us in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father God, we would again come to you again here today. Father, I just ask you, Father, that you be a part of this service. I pray that, dear God, that you open hearts and minds all across the congregation. That, dear God, that we're receptive to the word of God here today. That God, Lord, that you just reach down from heaven. And, dear God, that you give us the things that we need. That, dear God, that we leave this place closer to you, Father. I just pray that. God, the convicting power.
walk up the Milky Wide Way, I'll see that homecoming in a ray. chapter number 17 and uh before i get started this morning i i want you to understand uh that i need uh your participation i need uh the the congregation's participation in this morning's sermon and uh so if you don't participate and we're here for two hours it's your fault all right uh i need your participation for this for this message uh, to be able to be conveyed the way I feel like that God wants it uh, to be conveyed. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to begin uh, with, uh, with a, a question. And it's not something that a, a lot of times we uh, want to think about, especially on a Sunday morning. And I'm going to be honest with you. I have wrestled uh, with the Lord over this message, and, and he said... Uh, that today's the day, so we got to preach it, all right? So I want you to understand that. I don't, uh, I don't prepare my messages three, four, five weeks or six months in advance. Uh, I, I, I try to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and let Him lead and guide where He would have us. And, and so this morning's message is by no accident that you're here. Uh, and so I want you to get that, and, and I want you to respond and listen carefully to the question. I want you to respond uh, to the question by simply standing up. Do not stand up because the person next to you stands up. Stand up if this, if this question applies to you and the answer is yes. Have you ever been hurt in the church? If you would, stand. Now, I want you to look around the room at those that are standing. And I want you to take notice this morning that I'm standing. Okay? So this is something that's very personal to me. We're going to talk about hurt in the church. If you would, all everybody else, uh, stand up. And I, I want you to read with us in the, in the first five verses of the book of Luke, verse, uh, chapter 17. First five verses, the Bible says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our 
faith. Let's pray together. Father, this morning I am your servant. I am your mouthpiece in this place for this very hour. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that you'd anoint me, God, just to preach your word uh, this morning. God, as we responded to uh, uh, those that responded to the question this morning of about hurt, Father, this morning I pray, God, uh, uh, Lord, that we would find how to move past that hurt, how, God, uh, that we could move uh, beyond that hurt just to serve you. Uh, Father, I know there may have been some that needed to stand up, God, this morning and didn't. Uh, Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to their hearts through this message. Let everyone in this place understand that they're not alone. And God, Lord, that we love you, we thank you, and we praise you, God. Have your will and your way through the remainder of this service, because it's in your name I pray. Amen. If you would be seated at this time, I I, I want to say to you this morning, uh, uh, when you talk about hurt in the church, that I want to say uh, for those that have never experienced it, there's no hurt like church hurt. Uh, there's nothing in this world that'll hurt you like church hurt. You know, I heard uh, uh, Dr. Joe Arthur say one time, he said, when your head hurts, you take a head peel. Uh, when your foot hurts, you take a foot peel. But when your soul hurts, there is no peel. And, and let me say this this morning, that church hurt a lot of times is soul hurt. It gets down in your heart. It, it gets to the place in, in the inner uh, innermost part of your being where uh, it just it, it just irks you and, and it makes you not want to go to church. It makes you not want to be around people. Uh, if you to, this very afternoon from four to seven, as we minister to the community uh, uh, that that we live in, and and I and, and I listen to me, I I think it's an awesome thing. I think it's a great thing. But let me remind you, church. Uh, that you're going to minister to people this afternoon uh, that have experienced church hurt. Uh, you're going to minister to a lot of folks that I asked, uh, uh, why don't you come to church? Why don't you visit with me? Uh, they start out with a story about what's happened to them. And all I can say to them is I apologize for what has happened to you. Uh, but let me say this, and I can't promise you that it won't happen at our church. I, I can't promise you that it won't happen and you won't get uh, hurt at our church, but I can promise you uh, that I don't go to church for the people. I go to church for the Lord, and if you're serving the Lord, you're going to be gathered together with the people. That's what the Bible says. Amen? It says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, which is the manner of some. It goes on to say, and so much the more as you see that day approaching. Y'all, I'm telling you something that, that today as I stand before you, I'm more homesick than I've ever been before. I'm ready for Jesus to come back and split that eastern sky. I'm ready to leave up out of here and leave this world behind. Oh, but I'm telling you, even in the midst of all of those feelings that I have, I have the the, the need to stay and to serve uh, right here where I'm at. And sometimes it's serving to those people that are hurting. Okay, I want you to understand that. Uh, I don't know what it may have happened to you, what what, what may have uh, come uh, upon you that has offended you or that has hurt you. Uh, but let me say this this morning: that was people that wasn't God. Do you hear what I'm saying to you this morning? That was people. It was not God. I may hurt you. I won't mean to. I promise you. I love everybody in this place. And you say, preacher, you don't even know me. I love you because the love of Jesus is in me and I'm telling you I love you this morning and I would never personally or intentionally mean to hurt you uh, but I'm going to tell you something if you've got your feelings on your sleeves honey I'm liable to knock them off and not even mean to you hear me amen I, I, mm. here's here's we're, we're going to walk down through this passage of scripture that Jesus himself spoke to us. And, 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 and as we traverse through this passage of Scripture, I want you to ask yourself some questions. I'll give you those questions. I don't have a, a pretty three-point outline this morning. It's more like nine points, but that's, not, that's beside the point. Uh, I don't have a, a, a cute little outline, all right? I, I don't. But as Brother Jeff Laborg says, if you're taking notes, write this down. And then he says, if you're not taking notes, I want you to write this down, all right? So there's some things this morning that you need to write down. 
I want you to notice that Jesus said it's impossible, but that offenses will come. It's impossible. It's impossible for it to be any other way. Why? Because we're dealing with a bunch of humans. Amen. There is none. Of, now, we may be saved, but we ain't perfect, right? Amen. We're dealing with a bunch of humans, and so it's impossible that offenses won't come. That that it's just a it's an absolute impossibility. So listen, it's a given that offenses will come. It's a given that you will get hurt. It's a, if you, if you uh, walk long enough in this life, there will be somebody that hurts you. Okay, if you go to church long enough, if it's a Baptist church, I can't speak about anybody else, but I can talk about Baptists because I am one, you'll get hurt. All right? People say something to offend you. People say something to hurt you. He said, woe, Jesus said, woe unto him through whom the, they come, who the offenses come. So woe, it means, uh-uh, you don't want to walk down that path. That's what Jesus is saying. You don't want to be the one to offend somebody else. Never, ne listen to me, church, never be somebody's excuse not to go to church. Never be somebody's excuse not to go to church. If you are, the Bible says that Jesus said these words, it were better for him that a millstone, that's a, that's a big grinding wheel, be hanged around his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. What little ones is he talking about? His flock. His people. And you know, everybody sitting in this, in this place this morning are di at different levels in their walk with God. There's some that have just been saved a few, a few weeks. There's some that has been saved for 30 years. There's, there's others sitting here this morning uh, that, that have uh, been saved only 10 years, but they've really do dove in to what God has done for them. They dove into the Word of God, and so they may have progressed past that person that's been saved 30 years. Okay, so we got to understand all of those things. But Jesus said it'd be better if you had a grinding wheel wrapped around your neck and you cast into the depths of the sea than for you to offend one of these little ones. Somebody, uh, who is those little ones? It's somebody uh, that's just been saved for a little while. It's somebody uh, that, that, that hadn't got uh, into the church and that hadn't got uh, uh, plugged in and tied into the church. It, it, it's somebody that, uh, that's maybe extra sensitive. You know, we got those. Y'all all looking at me. Y'all, every one of you looking at me like I'm crazy. Is it the jacket? I mean, really. I'm, t I'm preaching to you truth this morning. I'm, 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 I'm hitting us where we live. Where we actually live. There, there are folks... That even, like I said this afternoon, we're going to get to minister to them that's been hurt in the church. The, the, you're going to meet somebody tomorrow on your job. Kids, y'all going to meet somebody at school that's been hurt in the church. How do we do that? How do we minister to those people? Where is the church when people are hurting? That's my question. Where's the church? So we don't want to be somebody's excuse, right? Verse number three, Jesus says, take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. In other words, in this verse, as we, as we uh, come through this verse, we're going to unpack what that means. Take heed to yourself. Because this does not apply to the person sitting next to you. This applies to you. You can't say, boy, I wish so-and-so had been here to hear this. Listen, this applies to you. Take heed to yourselves. First question I want to ask you uh, this morning, if I, it, it, let me read a little bit more. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Number one, ask yourself, am I easily offended? Am I?
offended. Boy, I ain't getting no amens, but that's all right. Am I easily offended? In other words, do I wear my feelings on my sleeve? When I walk into the doors of the church, am I wearing my feelings on my sleeve? Because there's a lot of folk do that. And they're just waiting on somebody to knock those feelings off and hurt those feelings so that way they can have an excuse not to come in the doors of the church. There's a lot of folk like that. Am, am, I worried, am I easily offended? You've got to take heed to yourself. You've got to examine yourself and ask yourself, am I easily offended? I'm going to tell you a story, and I've got to use, I got to use my daughter as an example. I love my little girl. I do. She's my sweetheart. She's my baby girl. And she will always, when she was little, I, asked, I used to ask her, I'd say, Hannah hey, Grace, who are you? And she'd say, I'm Poppy's little girl. And I, boy, I just love that. And I'm going to tell you something. It don't matter if she gets to be 40 years old, she's still going to be Poppy's little girl. You hear me? The other morning, I, I don't know, a few weeks ago, um, she wakes up and her head's stopped up and she's, she's got a headache and she's stuffy and, you know, got all these allergies coming on. You know, I think the, the uh, Bradford pear trees was blooming or something and it got her tore up. She woke up and anyway, she said, Poppy, my head hurts. My eyes are watering. My head hurts. I said, have you took anything? Seems like a good question, right? I said, have you took anything? She said, no. I said, well, you dummy just hurt. <laughs> Seemed like a good answer at the moment. My little girl instantly I'm talking about in a split second, big old crocodile tears come flowing out of her sight. And she said, you yelled at me, puppy. <laughs> Y'all, I felt about that high. I said, baby, don't cry. Don't cry. I know she said, my, my head hurts. And I, you yelled at me. <laughs> Why am I telling y'all this? It's because everybody's different. Every one of us are different. Some are a little more sensitive than others, and we got to be. We we've got to understand that. But we have got to ask ourselves: Am I easily offended? Maybe I'm the problem. You know who? Y'all know who disappoints me more than anybody. And I'm just being honest. I, I, it, ain't, it ain't a politician. You know who disappoints me more than anybody? I see him every morning when I look in the mirror. Okay? I disappoint myself more than anybody could ever possibly disappoint me. So I, this morning when I say, am I easily offended, when I ask you that question and I say, take heed to yourself, examine yourself, it's not because I'm trying to be ugly to you. It's because I'm trying to, for you to understand that a lot of times it's us. It's we that are the problem. Every one of us are different, and it's okay to be different. It's okay to be a little different than the person sitting next to you. I, I mean, you could say just almost anything in this world to me, and I can promise you it's not going to offend me. It ain't going to hurt my feelings. It may make me mad, but it ain't going to hurt my feelings. You hear what I'm saying? The only four people in the world that can hurt my feelings are the people that I live with. And they, they can hurt my feelings. Anybody else, you ain't going to hurt my feelings. You may make me mad. You may make me upset, but you're not going to hurt my feelings. But you know what? You're not wired like I'm wired. You're not like I am. So just because I'm that way doesn't mean that you can't be sensitive like Hannah. Okay? But you got to ask yourself, am I easily offended? Because if, if, if it's possibly me, then, hey, I need to work on me. If it could possibly be me, I need to work on me. All right, 
second thing I, I want to ask you, am I able to be rebuked? Jesus gave us, gave us and I, I'll point it out in just a minute, but he gave us a recipe for how to walk through this. He said, he said if your brother offends you, rebuke him. So, all right, let, we, we, we're, most of us are real good at doing the rebuking. You hear what I'm saying? We're real good at that. But I'm going to ask you, are you able to be rebuked? I'm preaching a lot better than y'all are acting. I'm just saying. Am I able to be rebuked? Can somebody come to me and say to me, that hurt me? And us not blow up and say, well, I don't care if it hurts you or not. You ought not wear your feelings on your sleeves. Huh? Am I able to be rebuked? Can somebody call, talk to me and say to me, hey, look, look that hurt me. Uh, are you able to be, uh, hey, that offended me. You shouldn't have done that. Because if you're not able to be rebuked, if you're unapproachable to other people, you know what? You're going to hurt people's feelings. They're not ever going to tell you. They're just not going to be in your life. You hear me? Now, I want you to understand what I, where I'm going with this this morning. If, you don't, if you're not able for somebody to come to you, if you're not open and you're not approachable, then you, you know what? Guess what? You can look in the mirror. Maybe you're the problem. You hear what I'm saying? How do I fix that? That's how you fix that. That's how you fix that. Because I'm going to tell you something. And, and I'm just, I can't speak for anybody but me this morning. But I can tell you that there's been times in my life where I've not been approachable. Right, Karen? <laughs> there's been times when I've not been approachable. When you could not come to me and say to me because I'd have took it the wrong way. You know how I got it fixed? Now, I ain't 100% now, y'all. I ain't perfect. You hear what I'm saying to you. But how I got most of it fixed and how the Lord's still working on me, thank God he's still working on me. Somebody say amen. amen. But it was on my knees in prayer. It was, God, I, I need you to work on me. I need you to, 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 to make me approachable. I need you to help me to understand what other folks are going through, how other folks are viewing things, because I can't seem to get it through my thick skull. Am I able to be rebuked? All right, next thing. He says, uh, if, he, if your brother trespasses against you, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Do I repent quickly? Do I repent quickly? Well, what is repentance? That's a turning. A repentance carries with it the idea, the thought of changing your mind. And that's when you go to somebody and say, you know what? Brother, I was wrong. I was wrong for, to have said this, or I have, was wrong to have thought this, or I was wrong uh, uh, to have acted in the way that I acted. And you go immediately and you say, you know what, I repent, I'm sorry. You know, how many, how many uh, uh, problems could be stamped down in the church if people would just say, dude, I am sorry. Just go and grab a brother or grab a sister and say, man, I'm sorry if I offended you. I'm sorry uh, because I did, it was not my intention. Do you repent quickly? No, because the, the fact of the matter is this. We're all human, and every one of us wants to say, I didn't do nothing wrong. Amen? They want to say, I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not. I'll be doggone if I'm going to say I'm sorry if I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm just not going to do it. That's just the way we are. Or is that just a sand mountain thing? Now, I want to ask you, I'm, I'm being serious this morning. Or do you repent quickly? Are you quick to say you're sorry? 
This ain't got nothing to do with the message, but I just want to say something. Sometimes you got to say you're sorry even when you don't see what you did wrong. Amen. Happens all the time in my marriage. <laughs> you shouldn't have amen right there, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, I don't understand how in the world somebody can do something so wrong and then it be me that has to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, baby. <laughs> well, are you quick to say you're sorry? Are you quick to repent? That's how we keep health in the church. It really is. That's how we keep health in our families. Do you know what your family is, by the way? A miniature church. So you got to ask yourself, am I easily offended? Right? Uh, uh, am I able to be rebuked? And do I repent quickly? Ask yourself for that in your family. Because your family is a miniature church. Okay, I'm going to move on before I get in trouble. Jesus said, if he repent, forgive him. Do you forgive easily? You got to ask yourself, do, do I forgive easily? Do I hold on to hurts and hang-ups because of stuff that's happened to me? Do I guard myself? Listen to this. Do I guard myself with other people because of what's happened to me in the past? Mm. Do I forgive easily? If you don't, right there. And you know what? I keep pointing at this altar, but you can do this in your seat. You can. You can get some things right this morning that ain't been right for years, and you can put hurts away that, ha that you've held on uh, to for years. I'm telling you, this morning can be a life-changing experience for you if you'll just wake up and say, look at, look at the questions. D am, am, am I able to be rebuked? Do, do I repent quickly? Do I forgive easily? Am I offended easily? What about this is me? Okay, so here's, here's the recipe that Jesus gives us uh, in, in verse 3. He, he says, uh, first of all, there has to be an offense. Then he says, you rebuke, repent, and forgive. Rebuke, repent, forgive. Rebuke, repent, forgive. You know what? That stuff will work every time. Amen? Amen. If somebody had, has not, had, does not know that they've offended you, you got to be able to go to them and rebuke them. They've got to repent, and then you got to forgive. This is the way it goes. It, there's a recipe right there Jesus laid out for us in, 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 in Luke chapter 17. And do you know how I many troubles could be, could be stopped, how much strife could be stamped out of the modern-day church if we just rebuke, repent, and forgive? Right, amen. amen. And then here he goes. And, and I'm going to give you my last question. Oh, I'm doing so good. I'm going to give you my last question. And then we're going to just move real quickly. And this is what these first three or four verses boil down to. Do I extend the grace that Jesus has extended to me? Do I extend the grace that Jesus has extended to me? You say, well, Brother John, you don't know what that person did. They didn't crucify you. They more than likely didn't beat you with a cat of nine tails. 
And Jesus, even when in the midst of him hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Do we extend the grace that Christ has extended to us? Probably not. Because then we'd be a perfect church. Right? If we extended grace and we said, you know what, I am not today, I am not going to, I'm going to wear Teflon on. I, I'm not going to let anything anybody says hurt me. I'm not going to let anything anybody uh, says uh, d offend me or disturb me. I'm just going in here to worship Jesus. And, and we, we'd put on our Teflon, and then somebody would say something, and we'd say, I'm not going to even talk about that. I'm extending grace. I, do you, do you see what they did? I'm extending grace. I'm not even looking. I, I'm not even looking. I'm extending grace today. You know, that'd be the perfect church. When we come in every Sunday and we, every one of us just come in and say, hey, I'm not going to be offended today. I'm not going to let anything get under my skin today. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to just serve Jesus. Hmm. I've gave us the recipe for the perfect church. Reckon we'll ever get there? We won't. Not unless we're willing to give the grace that God's given us. Okay. I, I, I told you I was going to hurry, and I am. Then Jesus said to them in the verse 4, And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, Thou shalt forgive him. You know, Jesus said to them, offense is going to happen. Feelings are going to be hurt. People are going to get on your nerves. They're going to get under your skin. And, and if you'll just re rebuke and they'll repent, you forgive. Simple. And Jesus takes it a step farther, and he said, even if it's excessive, even if it's seven times a day, you just keep forgiving them. I want you to notice what verse 5 says. The apostles said to him, Lord, increase our faith. You know what they're saying? We can't do that on our own. We can't do that on our own. Lord, you have just set the bar so high that we're not able to do that. He has set the bar pretty high, hasn't he? He set the bar really high, hasn't he? Uh, to think that I can't be offended and I, I can't, I can't uh, let somebody get under my skin. I, I've got to go to them, rebuke them, repent. They repent. I forgive them, even if up to an excessive amount. Lord, increase our faith. Don't we need to do what the apostles did and say to the Lord, Lord, this bar's way too high. Increase our faith. In other words, you do in me what I cannot do in and of myself. You work through me what I can't work out on my own. Father God, you're going to have to do something because I can't do what you're asking me to do. we got to get past the hurt, get past the hang-ups and, and say, you know what, I, I, I'm here to serve one and only one. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care if anybody else worships. I'm going to worship. I'm not going to judge. I'm just going to worship him with everything that I have. I'm not going to let something offend me. I'm not going to let some hurt keep me out of church. I'm not going to let some hurt uh, affect the way I worship. I'm not going to let some hurt affect, uh, uh, affect the way I I live, I'm just going to live for Jesus, and I'm going to let the chips fall where they, where they may. I, I'm just going to live for him. I'm telling you this morning, how much better a church would we be? How much better a church member would you be if you answered those five questions, you answered them in, 
in a way that where you really examined yourself. I'm telling you this morning, there's been more conviction in the last 15 minutes of my preaching uh, than what many of folk have experienced in the last 15 years of their life uh, because it has got where we live. It has gotten real this morning to us. Uh, that You know what? Uh, a lot of folks, there's over half the congregation this morning uh, stood up when they said, I've been hurt. You know what, honey? You're not alone. Uh, there's a lot of folk been hurt, but are you still serving? Are you still working? Are you still moving forward for the cause and for the kingdom of God? Have you let things go uh, that, that people have done to you in the past so that way you can uh, do something great in the future? I'm just asking this morning uh, because it's a, we're a whole lot of us there. Amen? Mm. Well, Lord, increase our faith. God, do something in me that I can't do on my, um, on my own. Uh, you, you know what? Proverbs 18.21 says that there's, there's power in the tongue. There's the power of death and life in the tongue, in the things that we say, in, the th in, in, in what we uh, let come out of our mouth. There's power in that. All right? So when you say something, make sure it's something good. You know what? My daddy... My daddy, he died when I was 11 years old, and I miss him so much. There is days when I would give every dollar that I'll ever make in my lifetime to just get to talk to him for 15 minutes. I'm telling you the truth today. But anyhow, my, my daddy was my hero. He, he, I, to me, he was Superman when I was a kid. And I used to look up to him. But I'll never forget what he said to me one time. I was just a little boy. But he said to me, John, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. Amen. And that has stuck with me for years and years and years. And, 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 and you know what? I've not always done that. I've not. I wish I had a. But daddy, you say, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. Church, listen to me. Let's practice that in here. Let's practice that with those that we're around this morning. If we can't say nothing good, just don't say nothing. There's some people I don't talk about. <laughs> Amen? Why, Brother John? Because I ain't got nothing good to say. Amen? All right? you got to understand that. And you, are you being ugly this morning about something? No, I'm not. Absolutely not. You, you, you just had somebody pop in your mind. You thought, boy, I can't talk about them no more. <laughs> Listen, we got to be quick to forgive. Move past those things. Because there's power in the tongue in what we say. When we as kids growing up and I don't remember the whole song but be careful little eyes what you see be careful little ears what you hear let me let me say something to you this morning be careful little mouth what you say be careful little mind what you think because oftentimes what we got in our mind comes out our mouth you hear me this morning and you say well brother John I can't control my thoughts that goes through my mind I, I heard brother David Smith said it like this one time he said no you can't control your thoughts that, that go through your mind sometimes but you can keep them from coming out your mouth but he said he put it like this he said fellas listen to me you, you can't control whether or not a buzzard flies over your head but you can keep that thing from nesting in your hair amen so be careful, little mind, what you think. Don't let those thoughts come in, in into your mind. Think, boy, that I, I, I just don't like that person, or that person just sorry they low down, or I wish they'd act different. I wish they'd talk different. I wish they'd do this different. Careful, little mind, what you think. When that buzzard starts trying to make a nest up there, run him off. Amen. Amen. Before you think it so long, it comes out your mouth. 
Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Be careful, little mind, what you think. Be careful, little mood, what you're in. Amen? Because your mind, your mouth, and your mood's got a lot to do with your worship. Your mind, your mouth, and your mood has a lot to do with how good of a church member you are. Your mind, your mouth, and your mood has a lot to do with how good of a servant to the Lord Jesus Christ that you really are. So careful, little mouth. Careful, little mind. Careful, little mood. Well, I'm, I'm leaving you with this. And I want you to, to think about what I'm saying to you. Everyone is not who they appear to be. The Bible tells us very expressly about tares being sown among the wheat. And, and let me say this to you. People will hurt you. People will let you down. But God will not. We come for here for him. We don't come here for each other. We come here for him. People will let you down. God will not. People will hurt you. God will not. People will judge you unfairly. God will not. People will talk about you. God will not. People will leave you. God will not. People will forsake you. God will not. People will unfriend you. God will not. People will throw you away, but God will not. People will judge you far falsely but God will not he will not go ahead and get us a song ready brother I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes and I'm going to ask you the same questions this morning and there's nobody looking around